Ted Leanman pulled into the long driveway in his beat-up station wagon. It was still dark out that early hour when shadows seem longer, and even small towns feel mysterious. He parked, and for a moment, Ted just sat in his car. He stared at the house ahead, gripping a card in his hand. The thrill of the unknown gnawed at his gut, like the feeling you get before going over the first drop of a roller coaster. This was it. He had waited for this, signed up for it, and now, he was here. Ready or not. Ted got out of the car, his shoes crunching on the gravel. He walked up the steps to the front door, his breath puffing out in clouds as the morning chill wrapped around him. The doorbell button glowed a soft yellow. He pushed it. The sound echoed inside the house and he stepped back, waiting. The door swung open. No one was there. Ted hesitated. Hello? He called into the darkness beyond the doorway. No response. He stepped inside, his sneakers silent on the thick carpet of the hallway. The door closed behind him with a soft click, and suddenly, the air felt different. He noticed a chair, a plush armchair in the center of the room, with a drink sitting on the armrest. There was a note next to it, but the scrawled handwriting was too hard to read. Ted picked up the glass. It smelled sweet. The instructions he'd received said to follow every prompt. He shrugged and drank. The world blurred. The glass slipped from his hand and shattered, but Ted was already falling, his legs giving out beneath him. When he woke up, Ted's head felt like it was stuffed with cotton. He blinked, his vision adjusting to the bright light. He tried to move, but something felt weird. Something around his waist. He looked down and his eyes went wide. He was wearing nothing but a diaper. He groaned, trying to sit up. That's when he noticed her. A tall blonde woman, with icy blue eyes standing across the room watching him. She looked about 27, her arms crossed casually. Are you ready for the experience? She asked, her voice flat, as if she'd asked it a thousand times before. Ted stammered, I... I don't know. His head spun, and darkness crept in at the edges of his vision again. He passed out. When he came to, Ted was in a different room. He looked down. He was now in a one-piece suit, but the diaper was still there, snug against his skin. He tried to pull at it, but it wouldn't budge. The blonde woman was back. My name is Reed Brown, she said, her eyes never leaving his. This is the diaper suit. It controls how your mind thinks. As long as you're wearing it, you can't take off the diaper. If you need to go, you have to use it. She spoke matter-of-factly, as if explaining the rules of a board game. The suit stops the signals to your brain. You won't know you need to go until it's already happening. Once the suit is off, you'll return to normal. She paused, giving him a strange smile. Do you agree to continue? Ted swallowed, his throat dry. He didn't know what else to do, so he nodded. Good, Reed said. She handed him a pen, along with a form on a clipboard. Ted tried to sign, but his hands were clumsy, uncoordinated. He managed a shaky signature. Perfect, she said. The three days can begin. The next time Ted opened his eyes, it was morning. He was lying in a small room, and Reed was there again, standing over him. I need your permission to start the day, she said, holding a tablet in front of his face. Ted blinked at it, then signed on the screen with his finger. Reed smiled, nodding. Today, I want you to try not to have an accident, she said. Try as hard as you can. Understand? Ted nodded again, his face turning red. Reed led him to the living room where she turned on the TV. Ted sat on the floor, and for a while, everything seemed almost normal except for the thick padding between his legs. Then another man walked into the room. He looked to be about the same age as Ted in his 40s with a scruffy beard and tired eyes. This is Kenneth, Reed said. Ted and Kenneth nodded at each other awkwardly. They both watched the TV, but soon they began to argue. Something about what show to watch. Reed's face hardened and she stepped in. No arguing, she said firmly. Ted. Come here. 
Ted felt his stomach drop as he shuffled over. Reed grabbed his arm, pulled him over her knee, and spanked him. Hard. Ted's face burned with embarrassment, but at the same time, a strange feeling of satisfaction settled in. He realized, to his surprise, that he liked it. The rest of the day passed in a blur. They ate dinner, did puzzles, and watched more TV. Reed kept a close eye on them, correcting their behavior whenever they stepped out of line. She made them sit on the floor while she sat on the couch, watching their every move. When they spoke without her permission, she would give them a stern look and they quickly fell silent. There was a strange rhythm to it all, a sense of control that both unsettled and comforted Ted. That evening, Reed led them to a small kitchen. She prepared their meals, and they ate in silence, sitting at a low table. She watched them as they ate, her eyes studying their every movement. Ted could feel her gaze on him, and he made sure to chew slowly, carefully, not wanting to make any mistakes. After dinner, Reed made them drink from baby bottles, holding the bottles herself as they tilted their heads back. Ted felt his face flush with embarrassment, but he did as he was told, the warm milk sliding down his throat. After dinner, Reed brought out a board game. It was a simple game, with bright colors and big, chunky pieces. Ted and Kenneth played while Reed watched, her eyes sharp, making sure they followed the rules. Ted found himself getting lost in the game, the simplicity of it, the way it required no real thought. It was almost relaxing, and for a moment, he forgot about the diaper, the strange suit, and everything else. But then, Kenneth made a mistake, moving a piece he shouldn't have. Reed's face darkened, and she reached over, swatting Kenneth's hand. Pay attention, she said sharply. Kenneth nodded, his face red. The game continued, but the tension lingered. The next morning, Reed was there again, holding the tablet. Permission to start the day? She asked. Ted nodded, signing the screen. I'm wet, Ted admitted, his face flushed. Reed nodded, and without hesitation she led him to a changing table. She undid the tabs of his diaper, her movements efficient, almost clinical. She sprinkled baby powder on him, then taped a fresh diaper in place. Ted closed his eyes, mortified. Kenneth was next. Reed changed him just as easily, as if they were both nothing more than oversized toddlers. Then she told them to play patty cake. Ted and Kenneth obeyed, clapping their hands together, their faces red with shame. After patty cake, Reed led them outside. It was a small yard, enclosed by a tall fence. There were toys scattered around, blocks, a plastic slide, a sandbox. Reed instructed them to play. Ted felt a strange sense of detachment as he sat in the sandbox, his fingers digging into the sand. Kenneth joined him and they built a small tower together, neither of them speaking. The sun was warm on their faces, and for a moment, Ted almost felt at peace. But then Reed called them over. She held up two bottles, each filled with a bright red liquid. Drink, she commanded. Ted took the bottle, the plastic nipple pressing against his lips. He drank, the liquid sweet and thick. He could feel it in his stomach, heavy and unsettling. Reed watched until they had both finished, then took the bottles away. Good boys, she said, her voice almost soft. Now, it's nap time. She led them back inside, to a small room with two cots. Ted lay down, the mattress thin and uncomfortable beneath him. Reed pulled a blanket over him, tucking him in tightly. She did the same for Kenneth, then turned off the light, leaving them in darkness. Ted closed his eyes, but sleep didn't come easily. The diaper was warm and thick between his legs, and he could feel the effects of the drink in his stomach. He could hear Kenneth's breathing, slow and steady, and the creak of the house as it settled. Eventually, exhaustion took over and Ted drifted off. Finally, it was the third and final day. Reed took them to a place called Builder Friend, like Build-A-Bear, but for grown-ups. Ted and Kenneth each picked out a teddy bear, stuffing them and dressing them in little outfits. Ted felt his diaper grow warm and he looked over at Kenneth, who nodded, his face showing he was experiencing the same thing. Reed changed them both, right there in the store. No one seemed to notice. 
or care. Afterward, they went to a small cafe. Reed ordered for them, and they sat at a low table eating sandwiches with their hands. Ted tried to ignore the stares of the other patrons, the way they whispered to each other, glancing at him and Kenneth. He focused on his sandwich, the bread soft and the filling tasteless. Reed watched them, her eyes never leaving their faces. When they got back to Reed's house, she told them it was time to go home. She handed each of them a small pill. This will make you forget everything, she said. You can take it if you want. Ted hesitated, then slipped the pill into his pocket. He didn't want to forget. Not yet. He got back into his station wagon, Kenneth getting into his own car. They exchanged a glance, and Kenneth gave him a nod. As Ted drove away, he couldn't help but smile. It had been the most bizarre experience of his life, but somehow, he was happy he'd paid for it. The thrill, the strange rules, the embarrassment. It was all part of the experience, and Ted knew he'd remember it, diaper and all. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Mommy Sarah's Storytime. If you enjoyed the stories, please support the channel by liking and subscribing. Remember, my channel is not monetized, and I write most of the content myself. On occasions when I don't, it's sourced through emails from trusted contacts. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you're able to, consider making a donation to support our channel. Your support means a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing more stories with you.